Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm a Mama Loves You GB here on FlossTube, but also on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Briefing. I missed you last week. I was really poorly, <laughs> really poorly. I will tell you all about it in due course. I don't want to turn this into a pity party too soon. Um, but yeah, I was really poorly. Anyway, I want to get in and show you some stitching first and I've got giveaways and I've got a haul and I've got lots and lots of things to show you. But I want to get on and do some of that first. I will talk about it a bit later on. But first, I just want to say a big thank you to all the great feedback that I've had for the list of UK floss tubers that I put on my um, drop down box in the last floss tube. And I've added to it since because I knew there would be people that I had missed out, missed off, forgotten, people that I watch all the time and I didn't put down. Um, Lots of you have commented that you've found so many great new people, uh, made new connections, which is what it's all about. Um, and then if you're not, uh, if you didn't see on Monday night on Instagram, I did what I call a conga, which is where I just set up a post and I tagged a few people um, that I know in the UK and then just asked everybody to kind of start tagging away. So there's basically kind of four groups. There's Instagrammers. Um, so people tagged other Instagrammers, people tagged people who have floss tubes, so they just put a little FT at the front of their tag. People tagged people who had shops, um, so like physical brick and mortar shops, and people who tagged people who had Etsy stores, um, all in the UK. So if you haven't seen that, go on to my Instagram and it's the most recent post or one back. It says, let's have a dance on it. Um, and you can scroll through and you can go and pick up as many people on Instagram that you might want to follow to kind of boost your your content coming into your Instagram. Find the things that you're interested in and make sure you're following the people that you're going to be interested in. So that was really, really good fun. Right. I'm going to start off by showing you the stitching that I had done last week because I'd done quite a lot last week. I was quite pleased with myself. So not last week, but the week before. That's what I mean in the previous week when the floss tube should have been filmed because it was the last week of the, the holidays and we'd been down in the Cotswolds and we'd been to um oh like this place called uh, uh, I want to call it IHOP something Airhop Airhop in Bristol which is like a trampoline park and they've got these big slides that you can fly down and fly off the end and so we'd been there with some friends and we'd done all sorts of bits and bobs and things in the Cotswolds and Generally had a nice Easter, uh, been up to Chiron and had done the Easter trail there and just, yeah, just generally had a lovely family Easter. So I had got quite a bit of stitching done. So let me show you where I got up to, up to last Saturday. So I had, what had I done? I had done a little bit of work on this, I think, although I am still slightly short of a finish. I think I might have put a few more stitches in it just to um finish it up but i just need to finish the otter's um chest there and that will be complete oh and the oh no the windows of the house are done so this is going to make a little drum it's called spring in wales and i think it's by i think the instagram account is the traveling stitcher but i can never put the instagram and the um etsy shop name down together so I'll put them down below so that you'll be able to find both the Instagram account of the person who designed this and also the um, the Etsy shop that it came from. I have not done very well and brought that particular pattern with me. So I put a little bit more into that and nearly finished it and then I decided that I wanted to work a stapler there that's random um, I wanted to do a little bit of work with this chart and I've just shut that rather than in it. And this is the Scarlet House, Elizabeth Walsh's work. Now I've got a few loose threads tucked in there. Now I purchased this and the threads from a voucher bought for me by the lovely Sue um, from Fobbles. Um, Fobbles is a great needle craft shop um, online. Again, it's in, it's already in my list of shops. They tend to have things in there that you don't see other places so do go and have a little look and there's quite often the opportunity to sort of add all the threads as well and very often you can do dmc or the over dies so i had a piece of um fox and rabbit from a previous box 
a previous fabric of the month. Let me just move that needle out of the way. And it's a 36 count called Spinifex. So it's like a neutral, really good neutral, slightly yellowy undertone, really good neutral. And so I had started, I think, last week, very, 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 very minimally on this is a fob. And there is this is a fob. So you can see it makes a little scissor fob at the front there. So I finished that. Yay me. And then I also stitched the little pins and needles booklet as well. So this is pins and needles. Now, unfortunately, I've got to have the big light on and it's making a bit of a, a funny cast and it doesn't help that I've got a real bad fold just there. Let's see if I can fold it just on the edge to take it away a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit better. You'll have to excuse me. There might be the odd sudden break for a coughing fit. So there we go. Pins and needles, the front of the little needle book. So I've done the two smalls and I've yet to start on the tray to put the, uh, to go in the bottom of the, or the stitching to go in the bottom of the tray. But this, it's not huge actually, 166 by 119. So I've got the two smalls done and then I'll start on the big, if that's a thing. And then I was looking through the charts that I got from Market and one of the charts that I got was by Heartstring Samplery and it's called My Scissors, My Rules. So on the same piece of fabric that I stitched the spring drum on, which is from West Green Loft Yarns. I can never remember whether it's West Loft Green Yarns or West Green Loft Yarns. Hang on, I've got their box here. West Green Loft Yarns. Um, and it was a piece of 32 count, and I think it was called Bark. So anyway, I stitched up my scissors, my rules, and I used um, Sulky. Did I say it was 36 count? It's not, it's 32 count. Um, and I used a Sulky, the one that's closest to uh, 3799. It's kind of like a brownie grey. So I really enjoyed that and it's stitched up so quickly. I think that took about two evenings to do. It was really, really quick. And then I decided that I wanted to do the Dutch Tomato Pin Keep by Brenda Gervais. Um, and so I did. And because I'm quite often like this, I just carried on. So. I've got a little bit more to do on this one. This is stitched in a sulky thread. No, it's not. A Silks For You silk that I bought a hank of last time I bought some silk from them. And it's actually a really lovely, bright sort of tomato red. Really, really pretty. So I haven't got very much more to do, actually. There's another... Uh, I've got the chart. There's another one of those and another one of those, I think, there and there. And then the drum is meant to be completely continuous, so sewn together really, really tightly. So this is one end of this flower and this is the other end of this flower. And this sort of funny uh, motif on the end here, the other half of it will be on the bottom there. So there's not much more left to go on that one at all. And so I can finish that one as a drum. I have thought about finishing that one either as a drum or on a spool. So we shall see, we shall see. So that would have been where I would have got to with you last week. I'd had an all right stitching and then things changed. So I, um, oh, Ness had had a really, she'd had most of the week before half term off with like a bug 
and then she developed a cough that she just couldn't get rid of. So Chris took her to the local pharmacy. They've got a dispensing pharmacist there. And um, he tested her throat and he said, no, she's got strep throat. She'll not get rid of that cough by herself. So he, she gave her antibiotics or he gave her antibiotics. And then on the Tuesday of the week before I was ill, Chris got strep throat. So when I started feeling really, really poorly on Friday night, I thought, I've probably got strep throat. So, of course, it, then it was Saturday. So I sort of phoned around the local area and living in kind of far flung West Wales, there's not a lot going on on a Saturday. There's no doctor surgeries open. There's no minor injuries open unless you drive sort of over an hour. But I did manage to find one pharmacist up the coast um, in a little village who was there and he was able to do a strep throat test for me and he would have been able to give me antibiotics. So I went and I tested negative. And I was like, oh, no. And so obviously all day Saturday, all day Sunday, I was just medicating myself, um, anti no, not antibiotics, um, paracetamol. See, my brain's not really working today. Paracetamol, um, ibuprofen, cough mixture, all of that sort of stuff. And then Monday I should have been back at school and I really, really wanted to be back at school because we're now in the really crucial port point of time it's a case of like they've got exams soon and I've got to be there but I just couldn't I was so ill I was so ill so I managed to get a doctor's appointment and I went to see this doctor and so I thought ah okay she'll do another strep throat test and antibiotics and we'll be on the way she wouldn't even test me for strep throat she looked down my throat and she told me with her iPhone actually that is apparently the new protocol for looking down someone's throat you use the torch on your iPhone um and she said no it's viral just keep taking um paracetamol every eight hours you'll be fine and i'm like i am hanging out my backside here love this is um she said well do you want me to prescribe you antibiotics and i was like well no not if you think it's viral because i'm a scientist and i know that that won't do any good if you're telling me it's viral i am going to believe you you tell me it's going to clear up in a couple of days i will believe you because you know what's going on in the local area at the moment. Okay, if there's, if there's a viral cough, okay, I've got a viral cough. And I was so ill, I was so, so ill, to the point where I couldn't sleep. I was waking up with my throat like closed off, coughing and coughing. And anyway, what do you do when you're really ill? You take to watching police dramas and police documentaries. So I worked my way through several box sets in the wee small hours of various different like crime scene investigation programmes, Britain's cold case files, all of that. And it got to the point I was, it was like four o'clock in the morning and I was watching this poor woman. They'd found a dead body in her house. And uh, I was sat there looking at her thinking, oh God, poor woman. And then it sort of struck me. She's had three teams of CSI and most of North Yorkshire police through her house and it's still tidier than mine. <laughs> and I was just, I was so tired, I couldn't sleep. Anyway, Wednesday, I dragged myself into the pharmacy, the local one in town. He does another strep throat test and yeah, I've got strep throat and he gives me antibiotics. And within two days, I'm feeling at least upright. And I'm just thinking, oh, why couldn't the doctor have done a strep throat test? But anyway, it's been, it's really knocked me on my backside and I've missed the whole week of school. So um, yeah, it's left me with a real, <coughs> sorry, that wasn't time, a real hacking cough. And um, just to the point where sometimes I go really dizzy and, and have to sit down. But anyway, we'll get there. We'll get there. Didn't stop me having a new start though. One of the things that you can do when you feel really, really awful, I find is stitch. So I decided to take part in the flag stitch along, um, which uses flags designed by the Vivsters on Etsy, two things. So I decided to do the Welsh flag because my daughter is Welsh and she really feels Welsh, which is lovely. Um, and she'll quite often say, oh, I'm Welsh, but you're not Welsh. And I'm like, no, I know, darling, you're Welsh. And, and she really does feel Welsh, which is lovely. So I decided to do the Welsh flag. And that is where I've got to. 
it was a really nice stitch actually to be doing when you're not feeling 100% because when she'd counted out, let me just, when she'd counted out the blocks, the actual stitching in the blocks was really quite easy. Now I have ironed this once, so the reason that it looks a little bit odd, I started in the middle at the bottom and then I worked my way along and then I tried a green square and I, cause I knew the green would look okay, but I just wanted to check the white because on, pattern I think it suggests to use white but obviously a lot of flags either don't have a lot of white in or they're not enclosed or the white is enclosed in some way whereas of course the top of the Welsh flag is white so I wanted to just check that this fabric wasn't going to be too dark and I think it's just about perfect where you can see the pattern coming through in each of the squares so this is using sulky thread as well and it uses four colours obviously a green a white a red and a black and I'm just going to be doing this sort of as and when I'm going to try and do a couple of blocks a week and so it'll soon be it'll soon be done Now, the other thing I've got to show you before I get into the giveaways, yes, I've got several, um, and the freebie is the stitch along that I've joined because I need another one of those. But I have single-handedly managed to mess up every single Lola Crow stitch along that I have joined. Um, I wanted to do the um, Greenhouse of Oddities, but I didn't join it until about the fourth planting. And so I just didn't go back and then start it. I've got the patterns, but I just didn't go back and start it. I didn't do very well with the Christmas stitch along. So this time I was gonna be Johnny on the spot. So this is the Deadly Aquarium cell. So this is right up my street. Um, my degree was marine zoology. So this is right, right, right up my street. So this is the frame. So the whole stitch is going to be 230 by 166 and the frame was out on the 12th so on Friday came out about 7 p.m in the evening here and you've got until May um, I haven't got the schedule printed out but you've got until May time to complete the I've got six weeks to complete the frame and then you start getting the gaps filled in so you've got two things on here already so you've got these gulls which are the western gull and then you've got common eel grass down here and I love the way that every every release she tells you about the organisms that are there and she did the same with the Greenhouse of Oddities. Uh, was it Greenhouse of Oddities? I'm gonna put the proper name down because there was two greenhouse cells that came out really close together or two things that came out really close together. I'm gonna put the proper name of it down, down below if it wasn't um, Greenhouse of Oddities. Um, so yeah, she tells you a little bit about each one. So they're both kind of low level or moderate level danger. So some of the things that are going to go in here are going to be high level data. So ooh, let's have a look. This is on a piece of 32 count fabric that I hand dyed a little while ago. So it's kind of a nice bluey green. It's got a bit, it's getting a bit blown now, probably about there. It's got a bit of yellow in it, but I think it will be absolutely fine. So I've done a lot of the black work, the black stitching, and then I've got a little bit of the white in, which is the top of the water, and a little bit of something coming down here. Um, but it needs quite a few different browns, and surprisingly I didn't have the browns, because when I read through the numbers, I thought, oh yeah, they're really common numbers, I'll have those somewhere. But no, I didn't, so I've put a quick order in to peak side so when they send my house of the month 
can I'll pop that in as well. So I've started on that. So I'm, I am going to get that frame done and I am going to keep up with it. The black I used actually, I had some of these paint box threads. Um, so I thought I'd give them, I'd give them a go. I can't remember if whether, yeah, somebody told me they were the Lovecraft's own brand, but they were quite, quite nice to stitch with. I had four of them, so I thought I might as well use them up. So that is all the stitching. So I've got some freebies, or a freebie, some giveaways, some haul, and a few things to tell you about that I've been watching. Let's do the freebie. Now this came up, this is by Boomerang Stitches, and it's, the one I've printed out is Bird Herd. The one, no, sorry, I can't see backwards, Bird Nerd. There is a second one, which is Bird Herd. I will be stitching Bird Nerd. I think it's a fabulous chart. I really, really love the colors. It's not very big. It is only, 171 by 89 so oh it's bigger than i thought but really really nice dmc colors just love those mixes of the corals and the greens and the blues really lovely that was sent to me by karen a lady who quite often sends me freebies and and things that she's seen so thank you very much i'll put the contact details down for you to download that they do have um a floss tube associated with them. And it, oh, I'm probably going to put the name across the bottom. It's something about Hathaway. I only remembered it because my best friend's surname is Hathaway. So yeah, I shall put all the details down for you to grab that and the contact details of the people who have so graciously given it to us. Right, now, giveaways. I have three. The first one I'm going to do is from Crow's Feet Stitching. Now this um, Ruthie released on the 1st of April, this lovely little sampler here. And this is by Ida Snag, 1st of April, 1882. Let me just read you a little bit about Ida. Ida was born in 1870 in the village of Patchold, Devon, which is where she worked her sampler. Following the threads revealed on the 1891 census, it seems that she had cut her ties with the West Country and moved to Sheffield in the suburb of Denal, where she was apprenticed to a lady's garment shop. She clearly worked hard and made seamless progression up the career ladder to become head of the hosiery at the company head office in Stitch Hill, Roxburgh, Scotland. She met her husband, Ivor Tear, a greengrocer shortly after her promotion whilst visiting family in Patching, a village in West Sussex. They tied the knot in, 19, in 1893 and then moved to the pretty village of Mendham in Suffolk to have a family. Ida and Ivor had only one little tear, their daughter Minnie, born in 1898. Ivor owned his own grocery shop by now, so it seems he had clearly always wanted to sell veg. So, she's done this lovely little um, sample, which of course she released on uh, April Fool's Day, but isn't it brilliant? That fox, is it a fox or a cat? That cat, it's a cat. Cat in the middle and the sewing machine. Sorry. I don't know what I've done to my eyes, but this bout of illness has really scrambled them. Um, little bobbin, little ladder. And she says all the motifs are based on a collection of little bits and bobs that she picked up on one of her fa uh, famous forays into uh, charity shops and thrifting shops and little antique shops. I tell you, if uh, Ruthie can't find it in a, in a thrifting shop, nobody can. So that's the first giveaway. The second giveaway is from Chloe, Girl with the Gavel Stitches. Now, both of these, both of these ladies I first met at Stitch in London. Um, I knew about both of them beforehand, but I actually first met them at Stitch in London. And every year now we meet up at Stitch in London, if not several places throughout the year. And uh, we always have a really good get together. So Chloe, who is Girl with the Gavel Stitches, has released Susanna Hartley, 1830. So this is Susanna Hartley, 1830. It says, there is my house and 
sorry Chloe, I can't read that with my uh, my eyesight as it is. I'm gonna have to read it off the pattern. There is my house and portion fair. My treasure and my heart is there and my abiding home. There we go. So that is Susanna Hartley. Now, I said to um, Chloe, she asked me if I'd like to do a giveaway for this. And I, she, I said, I'd love to. Chloe has already released the other piece of Susanna Hartley's stitching, which is this one, which is really, really lovely. I love that kind of, now is that a fox or a dog? It's got a bird on its back. So whatever it is, it's a cheeky little chappy. So this is the first part. Susanna had two pieces of stitching that Chloe owns, which is really quite unusual. So I said to Chloe, I said, yeah, I'd love to do a giveaway for your newest piece. I said, but how about, can we give the other one away as well? So you can end up stitching both of Susanna Hartley's pieces. If you'd like to win these, and they both come as PDFs, if you'd like to enter for Ida Snag, you can put the word April in your comments somewhere. And if you'd like to enter for Susanna Hartley, if you could put the word, I tell you what, let's go fox. I'm gonna stick my neck out and say that that's a fox. So fox for there, for those two, and April for those two. My third giveaway is really quite exciting and I've got it here. So this is the latest sal from the Historical Sampler Company. And this is called Do More of What Makes You Happy Stitch Along, okay? And this is a box that they've designed in conjunction with Emma Congdon of Stitch Rovia. And I'm giving away this box. So it's this box coming to you. So you will receive this box in the post and I will also then need your email so that you can receive the PDF of the, um, the chart the chart's not in here okay you get the first part of the chart and all the subsequent parts by pdf so i'll need to send have your email as well as your um email oh, postal address for this one there's words up there i just have to pluck the right ones out so let me get this right i've had to print out the email just so that my kind of fuddled brain doesn't make a mess of it so the stitch along pre-order opens on the 15th of april so next wednesday and the stitch along starts on the 13th of May. Um, it's 14 parts and a piece is released every 14 days, so every couple of weeks. So I'm going to show you the contents of this box. It's not secret what's in this box. Um, so there's been images on social media and what's in the box. So I'm going to show it to you. So make sure you know that whether you want to enter for this box or not. So I'm going to try and do it as nicely as possible so that you get this kit. This is what it looks like. It comes with this beautiful paper, which is kind of like a, a sticky, a sticky paper. And then underneath, you've got the contents attached to the piece of, there we go contents envelope that is a pink isn't it whoa that's even changing my skin tone pink and then we've got these lovely little bits and bobs so I'm going to take everything out and I'm going to show it to you Oops. piece by piece to what you're getting in the kit Oops. so first things first the little needle minder which is a really cute house like a little gnome house then you've got thread gloss really pink thread gloss all this is going straight back in the box and not anywhere near my daughter then you've got this lovely little pouch has it got anything inside it or is it just a packing material just packing materials it's quite nice actually because the pouch I found in the last kit was perfect for the threads. Then you've got a lollipop, white chocolate lollipop, 
which I'm definitely going to hide back in the bottom of the box because that would be the first thing to go. Then this is like a, it's like a felted house. But you could use that as a little pin cushion. If you worked on a stand or something like that, you could actually hang that off your stand and have it as a little pin cushion or a little needle cushion. Really cute, super cute. Then you've got these little hearts, four of them, wooden, storing some threads on. And then the envelope. So let's see what's in the envelope. There is some linen, uh, 32 count linen. They do it, they do Ada as a kit as well. So the chart will be suitable for Ada. So if you're not a linen stitcher, then I'm sure you can swap out linen for Ada, but it will be this kit you're getting. You'll just have to swap out a little bit of Ada that's in your own stash. And then, oh my goodness me, I won't undo it. But look at the colours in that. Oh, isn't that amazing? Pinks, purples, blues, some dark greens for a little bit of contrast. And obviously we don't know the chart. There's been some sneak peeks of it on social media. But if you like Emma Congdon and you like the sorts of things that she produces, you are not going to be disappointed. So I will send this kit out to you wherever you are and then they will send the chart out to you. So if you would like to win this kit, then the phrase that I would like you to use is happy. I'd like you to use the word happy and I'm going to give it two weeks. So by the end of what will that take us to like 28th of April, something like that. So that'll give me plenty of time to get it in the post for you ready to start the stitch along on the 13th of May. So all the giveaways will do for two weeks. So happy for the box, April for Ida Snag and Fox for the pair of Susanna Hartley's. And I might just have to stitch this now I've now I've seen them again. Chloe, they're too good. Right, I've got a little bit of haul to share with you and some UK Floss Tubers news. Let's do that first of all. So I've been taking my own advice and watching a few more UK Floss Tubers. So the people that I have discovered have made contact with and found that they are lovely and that I must have been hiding under a rock are um, Soph Sews, um, Ellie Welly Stitcher, Mrs. Han Hannah Walson Hume. I'm sorry, I probably said that wrong. And I've been working my way through their back catalogue. So I've been watching them and then watching two or three more as well. So I can't wait to work, watch more of them and then watch more of the ones that are on the list. Um, the projects that they're doing just absolutely absolutely amazing um and like i say i must have had my head under a rock to have missed them but that's what happens isn't it you just you get into a groove of the people that you watch and then you don't always look outside the box and so it's nice sometimes to have new folks new folks for company um i've also watched today which i've really really enjoyed is the paisley stitcher um and she has been doing a um, floss tuber for a day She's done a couple of them so far and the one I've watched today is um, her with Mary Darling. Now Mary is a prolific stitcher with 40 years worth of experience and stitches and she's just constantly pulling out these amazing things that I would be glad to have one or two of them and she's got so many of them. Excuse me. And it was really really nice to just be reminded of this great love and passion that so many of us have for stitching that we don't necessarily share on by via floss tube. Um, the people who do floss tubes aren't the ones with the greatest stitching collections. Um, some people are, some people are, but I know there's people who've stitched far more than I have and are far better stitches than I am. 
Um, and it's just so nice to be able to take a really good sneak peek into their collection and have a little nose, because we all love a little nose, don't we? Um, right, haul, little bit of haul. I have got two pieces of fabric, some threads and a thing, a thing. It's, I'm, I'm a bit addicted to flower frogs. And I really liked this one because it fits in the top of this little glass. I was kind of hoping it would glow, but it doesn't. Um, and it's just, I thought as part of a collection, it's nice to have ones at different heights. So this, I can pop some more scissors in the top there and just display. It really wasn't very expensive. It's got a couple of little chips in it, but I really liked it. I got my collection of classic colour works from Lakeside Needlecraft. So I've been working on these for quite a while now to build up the full set. So I am down in the M's and the N's. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Mermaid's fin. I don't know which is the better side to go. Mermaid's fin. Mint julep. Miss Madeline. Every time they come in a bag, I think, oh, I just want to stitch with just those colours. Mistletoe. Morning Glory. What's the story? Mould Berries. Muddy Puddle. And Nature Trail. And Mossy. So there's those. And I also got my um, fabric from West Green Loft Yarns. Um, I'm in their monthly fabric club. And it comes in a, a nice box. It comes very nicely packaged. And this time we have got, uh, oh, it just says Colourway April Fabric Club. So this must have been a special dye this time. It doesn't have a, a name and it's a really nice, it's going to look white, but it's a really nice pale mint green. Let me see whether if I hold it up next to the tissue paper. There you go. That's better. So it's a really, really nice minty green, quite pale. And I did think about using it for the aquarium cell but I thought it was just a little bit too light to get the white of the water to show up so looking forward to using that and then the fox and rabbit fabrics came in as well they were a little bit delayed due to the Easter weekend and then obviously I was poorly so I didn't quite get them into the post as quickly as I'd hoped to but they should all be with you now and this month is called Pillbug So a pill bug, I don't know what they would call it in Australia, but a pill bug, obviously a pill bug, um, but a pill bug to me is a woodlouse and a specific type of one that rolls up into a ball because we have some over here which roll up into a ball and some which don't, they stay flat. Um, so a pill bug or a pill woodlouse would be the one that rolls up into a little ball. Um, but woodlice have got so many different regional names and actually it's not a competition you don't win anything but leave me a comment below what do they call woodlice in your area because back in Gloucestershire we sometimes call them slaters as well um which is interesting and in Welsh they are mocking coida one of the names is mocking coida I know they've got several different names which literally just means wood pig um so yeah leave me a note just uh, just as a point of interest what is your local name for a woodlouse? Brian, we call him Brian. Right, that's it from me. I shall see you next week. Stay classy, Stitches.